Morning, everybody, again. Um, thanks very much, Adrian. Um, I'm just going to give a quick run down of the uh, economic uh, data and events this week. Um, first thing that Adrian said to me when he got in, he said, oh, market's looking quite um, solid. And I said, well, I don't think so. I, th I think that, you know, we are going to be uh, on hold a little bit whilst we wait for, uh, you know, guess what, that dreaded word, Greece. You know, I really thought perhaps it might have been on the sort of middle pages, but unfortunately it's definitely back on the front pages again. I'm really sorry for that, but that is uh, the way of things. I will sound very much like a worn-out record. Hopefully not too worn-out, but a little bit of a record, unfortunately. Anyway, listen, before we get on to all of that malarkey, um, just a quick review of last week. Um, it was a risk-on week for everybody. Uh, if you know what risk-on means, when we talk about risk-on, um, equities, uh, investors are putting money into equities again, although equities weren't up much, really. I think the Dow and the FTSE was sort of roughly 30, 35 points each up last week. Not much to speak of, but it's still positive. Um, gold and crude up. In fact, crude up quite sharply, um, let me just have a quick look at the crude market. Hang on a second. Let's just put up a daily chart. Uh, no, no. Where's it? Give me a daily chart, someone. Um, daily. There's a daily chart. Okay, so a daily chart. Let's just have a quick look at crude um, futures. Okay, so here. No. Let's put up a chart of. This is WTI. So you can see here. Uh, this is today, the red bar. We've opened uh, higher, and we've actually been slipping over the last hour and a half. Um, but actually, uh, crude, so that is on the, uh, that's the 17th. So that's the previous Friday. We closed at, uh, we closed at 104.06. Uh, and last um, Friday, we settled at uh, 109.62. So uh, quite a substantial move, really. Uh, and I know... Um, Brent, if you follow Brent crew, that's trading at uh, approximately uh, $124 a barrel. Brent is um, a heavier crude, and it's the one that's um, what a lot of uh, participants uh, hedge in uh, for their um, Middle Eastern crude, etc. So with all the uprising, uh, the Syrian problems, etc., and the Iranian embargo, uh, that's the one that has um, motored ahead more than WTI. So WTI really is trading at a discount of about $15. Uh, Nicholas Lester, would I short crude now? Nicholas, one of the problems with the crude market now, and I'm going to just, just quickly show you, if I could sort of compress this chart, and let's put on a, a weekly chart. We've not been here for a long time, um, and it's likely that crude is going to get squeezed even higher. Uh, I'm afraid the answer to that is I would definitely not short um, crude at the moment. However much I... Uh, had my suspicions over what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of speculative in uh, interest in it, Nicholas, which means if it turns out not to be a problem, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll come back very, very quickly. But I think I prefer for the market to actually tell me um, that that is the case. I mean, this is the weekly chart, but you can see that, uh, you know, back in um, April 2011, we actually got up to a high of, uh, I think that's 111... 114.83. That's on WTI. So potentially we got another sort of five bucks here at least. Um, okay, yeah, but that's interesting on the crude market. Um, let's just get back to the macro news, the sort of global news. Um, well, we nearly, very, very nearly moved um, Greece off the front page. It's just for a little bit, but sadly not for that long. Um, We've got the Syrian unrest, which um, I've just referred to. Um, that was um, that's continuing uh, the, the sort of uh, intense cruelty heaped on its people by its leaders um, is just extraordinary. And unfortunately, the Russian and Chinese veto of any United Nations action uh, means pretty much that that carnage is continuing without any resolution, um, which is just extraordinary in today's age. That. Uh, that should be the case, but um, the problem with um, uh, the problem with Syria is that uh, it doesn't have any effective opposition, unlike what happened in Libya. Um, and obviously, as I said, you've got that Russian and Chinese support for uh, 
um, sad. So it's um, a big issue there. Really, as I said, well, crude was uh, largely the beneficiary of this, of course, um, uh, helped by that embargo that I mentioned about by Iran um, on uh, European exports. Um, basically, uh, Europe was going to uh, have their own embargo, but I think Iran thought they'd get in first. Okay, so that's pretty much what's going on there at the moment.